Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back Hello. to another comparison review. We've of course got Gregorio with us. Thank and you, we're here to be here. Again in the sunshine doing another comparison. It's Amazing. absolutely baking today and we've got two hot motorcycles to compare. Indeed. We've got the new 2024 Fireblade. Now this bike's had quite a bit of work done for 2024. Now got split throttle bodies, different ergos, lots of more tech's been updated on it. What you got there, Greg? So this is the 2024 Yamaha R1. So obviously a massive competitor to the Blade. Um, historically, you know, the Blade's been better than the R1's been better. So there's been a battle for years, hasn't there, between yeah. the two bikes. So as, it should be interesting. As the R1 is disappearing, sort of end of this year, we thought, yeah. why not bring these two rivals back together for perhaps Perfect. the final time. Final the shootout. Final, final shootout for these two machines. So uh, that sounds of interest. Grab yourself a cup of tea and drop the roll the intro. So here are the bikes. Look at these. Absolutely uh, incredible, isn't it? You can't, we're both, we both, we both come from sports bikes background, don't you? And I don't think you can beat the look of a proper sports bike. For can't wait to try them. I've not yet ridden the blade, so I've only been on the R1 briefly, so it's going to be really nice just to do a comparison on these two, isn't it? Yeah. Cross-plane crank engine, straight four versus conventional straight four. So characters, I guess, going to be completely different, isn't it? Yeah, and it's it's the old battle, isn't it? The, the Fireblade versus the R1. It's like the classic, Been the classic out for sports years. bikes battle. The R1 is disappearing end of this year. I don't know if that's globally or whether that is just a Euro emissions thing or whether it's disappearing globally, I don't know. Hopefully it will be back one day, but this will be the last blade you can buy for road use anyway. So, And we haven't done much. I haven't done much on the blade over the, on, on the R1 over the years. So it's great to actually try the latest one or the last one and see how it stacks up against the modern kit. Right, well, come on, stop fanning. Should we just do let's it. go? <laughs> let's do it. I have had this bike for week and a half and um yeah immediately it's been impressing me actually i i had visions of it uh, of being it won't start <laughs> jesus <laughs> what have you done to it? Done to it? <laughs> i don't know of it being like really extreme for the road you know i just in my head thought r1 for the road it's just not the one because they're mainly track bikes but it's actually surprised me. It's not, it doesn't feel any more extreme a riding position than anything else. Really, that's quite interesting because I, I was exactly the same because I, I picked that up from Yamaha and I was expecting exactly the same thing. I mean, I have tried an R1, a 2016 model, this was a few years ago. It was a used bike that was decatted, it wasn't standard. And I was, I was under the same impressions. I thought that was quite an extreme bike. And I was expecting the Fireblade to be much more comfortable. Especially with the changes they've made to it for this year, they've changed the ergonomics a little bit. But uh, when I jumped on the blade, I was like, oh, hang on a minute, this just doesn't feel that comfortable. And I've done a first ride on this, and in that video I've sort of said that it's a little bit risky and all the rest of it. So, so you thought the blade was going to be more comfortable than it was, and you were unpleasantly surprised. Unpleasantly yeah, surprised. Yeah. Pleasantly surprised on the R1, how yeah. odd. But I was in full leathers when I rode this, and since riding it this morning in just my textiles, it is more comfortable to ride in textiles. So I'll be in, I won't know until we swap. Until we swap over, we can see which is the most comfortable out of the two. But they're both, I mean, they're both proper sports bikes, aren't they? They're both track machines at heart, these, really. Track machines with some small concessions for the road. It's more comfortable when you're wearing your pyjamas, is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Riding naked's probably the best bet. Oh, the blade, it, what, what really impresses with these bikes is just how locked to the road they are. They're, they're, so, they're so locked to the road and stable, absolutely stable. And what I have done to the Fireblade since that first ride, I've been through and I've set it up more comfortably. So I've got the suspension in the softest mode now, which is better for the road. I've also adjusted the power to power two because power one was really snatchy. So I'm on power mode two and I've decrease the engine braking as well so I've got it set up how I like it to make it a little bit more manageable 217 horsepower here mate 217 of the old ponies that's a lot isn't it 198 for the for 198 for the R1 I believe and they both got the same amount of torque both for 113 newton meters of torque 
having to work it to keep up with you. <laughs> it's so easy to ride the R1, you know, briskly. It, uh, it really is. It's, uh, it's actually very, it feels very flickable and it's, it's quite joyful to ride actually on country roads. I'm, I'm kind of enjoying myself on it more than I thought I would. But, and I don't know why, I just had preconceived ideas that it was going to be sort of like, oh, just all a bit too much effort, but it isn't at all. It's quite impressive. It's, it's a shame it's actually disappearing from the market, isn't it? We suddenly realised there's this bike there, which is actually a bit of a gem. Yeah, and now it's, it uh, it's disappearing. Yeah, and you've got no idea what's going on in terms of speed or revs, because the dashboard is so minuscule. <laughs> you haven't got your binoculars on. But no, I'm only teasing. It's, it's fine, but it is. it does look a little bit small and a bit dated. With your eyes, you can't see nothing, can you? <laughs> without your readers on, without your readers on, can't see doubt. No, my reading, yeah, exactly. I'm all right distant. Well, if you if you go on the Amhar website, it actually says it's class leading that dashboard. So take that. Yeah, I beg to differ. I'll oh, stop behind slow coaches now. Oh, now a load of push bikes. Let's have a little, let's have the first swap over. I'm really interested to see the riding position of the two. Don't forget, she's keyless, the blade, isn't uh, she? Oh, the blade's keyless, you're gonna need the key. Apparently the reason for it's keyless, Honda will tell you, is so you can have this in, in inlet go straight through into the airbox without an ignition barrel being in the way. That, that's their reason for it being keyless, because on a track bike, having a key, and a big, a big key at that, is a pain in the bum, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it feels straight away. You sit on the blade, it feels it just feels flat. The, the CBR 600 felt the same, very low, at the very, front, very low, very flat, isn't it? Yeah, all right, let's have a oh, I can smell the R1. What have you been doing to it? <laughs> yeah, sorry, not a lot, I don't think. Yeah, the R1 sort of feels shorter, doesn't it? The R there's less of a stretch to the bars on the R1. It's definitely a little bit more upright and a little bit more comfortable. Just weight on your wrists, isn't there? Straight away. The bars are wider on the on the blade as well, quite a bit, I would say. The, the peg height feels similar, doesn't it, on both bikes? They're both perhaps forward a little bit more on the R1, actually, a bit further back on the blade, maybe. I can't believe the R1 is more comfortable. I always, in my head, I thought the R1 was a really uncomfortable machine, you know, but I can't believe it's more comfortable than the Fireblade. And it really is, isn't it? Quite a bit, I'd say. There's much less weight on your wrists. And it's definitely more more instant off the bottom isn't it the power of the r1 versus the blade oh yeah because of that, that cross plane design it just it just shoots off doesn't it it won't matter on track but if you're buying these to use as a road bike as well it's definitely a consideration oh yeah i'm finding i mean we're obviously just going slowly here but you definitely know you're on a on a sports bike on the blade that's for sure the whole thing just feels totally extreme yeah it really does doesn't it and i've got that all set up as soft as possible if you have it on the, the one map and if you have it on the harder suspension, yeah, it's very focused, a very focused bike, very angry. And I, and I thought on my first ride, I remember that last year's blade being incredibly smooth, sort of almost like turbine smooth. This is gruffer, isn't it? It's definitely gruffer, isn't it? That was my first yeah. impression, that it, it felt yeah. gruffer. Now, I don't know if that's due to the split throttle body motors and what they've done with it to have split throttle bodies. That's the only thing I can think. But it's definitely a bit gruffer, isn't it? Yeah. And when I talk about it, the, the, the racy feely and it, the extreme feeling, I'm not even talking about the suspension, firmness or not, just the ergonomics, the riding position. It is totally focused and it is so obviously a race bike, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Which, of course, you could argue, I mean, that, that's exactly what they want, isn't it? But whether, whether, that make, whether, whether it makes it a good sports bike for the road, uh, I think you're going to need plenty of stops and rests, aren't you? Yeah, I do love the power delivery on the R1 for a road bike. It's just that instant, isn't it? It's a little bit, um, it's, it's, it's a little bit snatchy, isn't it? A tiny bit. And it this is, is, this is yeah. in the B mode as well. So this is like the softer mode. So I guess similar to the Blade, you know, if you have it in the full fat mode, it's a little bit snatchy for the streets, but it's, it's acceptable. <laughs> That sounds good, does the, um, the blade, I was expecting the blade to be similar to the CBR 600 that we had a week or so ago, but it, it feels quite a lot different to the CBR 600. Yeah, it's much more extreme, isn't it? I, can't, I actually can't wait to get out of these villages because I'm finding it actually you're really, really loads of weight on your wrists. Bloody hell, this has got some pick up! 
back in it. Jesus, it just goes, doesn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> It just picks up so quick on the throttle. It, it's, 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 a, it's rampant, isn't it? Rampant is the word. Engine characteristics are massively different between the two. Considering they're both straight falls as well, it's incredible how much difference that, that cross plane crank makes, isn't it? The firing order change. It sounds so angry as well. So much induction noise. Oh, <laughs> God, it's fast. The front wheel's just bouncing across the road the whole time. But not, I think I can live with the position on this, to be honest. Good God, they pick up speed quickly, don't they? They're so fast. You, you look down at the speed now and you're like, ah, that's not good. <laughs> Let's slow down a little bit. Let's go straight to jail speed. Yeah, just hypothetically you're saying chops here. Yeah? Hypothetically, of course, hypothetically. Whereas on the uh, the middleweights, on the ZX6 and the CBR600, you'd look down and you'd be surprised how slow you were going. It was like the opposite effect. Yeah, they're just engaging but and they felt racy, but actually it was a, a lot more sensible, wasn't it? Yeah, I, lo I, do, I do find this R1 very, very nice actually. I guess you're going to, we want to swap back in a minute, aren't you? <laughs> I can't wait, John. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing with the blade, just in the last, you know, I've only been riding it now for, what, 10 minutes as part of this comparison. But the riding position is 100% racy and it's very extreme. But it hasn't got that rampant performance in the sort of mid to lower echelons of the revs at all. So it sort of, it sort of feels um, a bit, a bit odd, a bit schizophrenic. It's like mega, mega racy riding position, but not that racy in terms of the way that it feels. Whereas on the R1, it's more comfortable, but the engine's so incredibly racy, isn't it? So, yeah, I think it's... Um, I'm struggling to fall in love with the way that the blade feels on the road as much. Yeah, I know what you mean. Once you... Uh once you get the blade, about sort of 6,000 revs though, it, certainly, it feels, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels racy then. Uh, of course, I'm not saying it's slow, that's ridiculous, that's not my point. No, I know exactly what you mean, that's what I mean, I'm just teasing you. The brakes on the R1 are really good as well, aren't they? I know they get a lot of stick for the brake performance, and but for road use, and obviously if you're a fast racer on track, you will find, I think, the limits of the ABS. And, you know, everyone says it who's a fast track rider. But for the road, they feel quite progressive, they feel sharp, they feel absolutely perfect. Mirrors are good on the R1. <laughs> right, that's it. We're talking about mirrors. I'm going home. <laughs> Woohoo! Sounds lovely. <laughs> that sounds gorgeous. I must say, the, the blade looks good from the back. I do like the back lights and everything on it. With a little tail tidy on there. Good looking bike, isn't it? It's a really, really good looking bike, isn't it? It feels so premium. It's sort of, the paint is just beautiful. It looks really nice paint job. Not just the color of it, but actually it looks quality. Yeah, it's, it, it is very, very nice. But it is almost 5,000 pound more expensive than the R1 though. I agree. And at, the, and at this prime price point on the blade, it must be similar to Ducati Panigale V4 now, surely? Not far off, I wouldn't imagine. It's getting there, isn't it? It is the RRR SP, so that has the, I think the EC3 O-Lins on it and, you know, pre top top quality components. But I think for 18.8 for the R1, which is what it is these days, that seems pretty reasonable, doesn't it, for top of the line sports bike? Never thought I'd say it, but I completely agree with you. It's the times we live in. The pickup on the R1's in a different league off the bottom. I know, it's so nice that bottom end, isn't it, on that bike? It just works, that type of engine pickup, doesn't it, for a road machine. It, it's just, it just works, that. I mean, and don't get me wrong, I mean, this isn't flat, but it is flat when you get off the R1. That's, that's the difference. I'm just wondering whether, though, as a road bike, I know we're not compared, we're comparing these to, e to, to each other, but I think the CBR, the new CBR recently launched 600 RR feels more engaging 
at normal kind of road riding than the blade. I agree, and well, I think that's the same for any, even like compared to the R1 to a degree. Those middleweights, I think, are just more engaging than meter bikes on the road. But I, I know what you're saying, and I, I do agree. But I, I, I think the R1 feels uh, the R1 I feel, could be the exception to that. I think it is. Yeah, it's quite. It, it's sort of playful, and it's there, and it's instant, and you can get on the power a bit. And I think it does. Uh, I, so I think, um, I think you're right. But the R1 is definitely, you know, I'm blown away by how much of a fun road bike it is. It's not what I was expecting, and it just goes to show you that actually preconceived ideas. What a nonsense. Yeah, you've got to try it. I bet before you bought your GSXR, you never even entertained even test riding an R1, did you? Because you thought it would be too uncomfortable. I didn't. And actually, when I told like Alex we, we had these, his immediate response was, oh, the R1 won't be any good yeah, on the road. It's a track bike. You won't be. And that's his immediate response as well. So it's amazing how that perception, it's not just me and you, I think it's just a general perception of where that's come from. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was really extreme and they've made it a little bit more road oriented. I don't know. That's what I was going to say. Perhaps they've changed the ergo slightly on it to make it more comfortable. Anyway, we'll part that there. I think we've done plenty on ergos. You get the idea. The blade is focused. The R1 is less focused. Right, so here we are. We're in a little village near the hill climb, the infamous hill climb. Nothing to do with Goodwood. It's Chopsy's favourite. <laughs> We've done Goodwood already. <laughs> We've done Goodwood. Ready then? Let's go. is lovely on this oh, and on the R1 it's absolutely gorgeous it's so stable easy to move around I mean this is when the drop bars sort of work when you want to climb around on the bike yeah pull over here and we'll have a little swap so far R1 was fantastic up there as good was it oh it's absolutely brilliant yeah it's a little bit stay yeah no I'm, I'm the same on this one <laughs> oh, is it alright I don't like it no, don't, don't do it there. Don't do it. All right, back on the blade. Go down the hill climb and then back up. Oh, the blade does feel so racy though when you get on the twisty stuff. I mean, R1 though, it does feel weird. They both feel incredible, don't they, actually, in the, in the corners, I think. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, the handling of both of them is like piss take good, isn't it? It's what they're made for, isn't it? It's what they're designed for. This is why you're... As he goes through a hedge. <laughs> this is why you're putting up with that extreme riding position to when you get to a lovely set of twisties to be able to exploit them. R1 oh, up the hill climb, all oh, that power delivery is so nice isn't it where you just rocketed forward. <laughs> so much power, oh, there's a cyclist. I don't fancy cycling up there. Yeah I fancy the R1's a little bit easier. A little bit more, gives you a little bit more confidence, a little bit easier to ride, I think, the R1. Yeah, the blade's not bad, though, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Oh, they're both amazing, aren't they? They're both absolutely amazing. But I think the R1 maybe is just a little bit, tiny little bit easier, maybe. No, they're both nice up the hill climb. The, the, the blade, the blade's so stable. And, you know, provided you, you, you have to be a bit more selective of your gear choice. Uh, but then, you know, once you've got it in the boil, it's, oh, it's amazing. You can really feel the tyre at the rear digging in. It's lovely. Like I say, that's why you part with that riding position, isn't it? So when you get to a set of, set of corners like that, and it all, it all becomes clear as to why you're in this riding position. Nice and easy to find neutral on both of them as well. No hunting around for neutral. There's, there's actually sort of very few niggles, really. There's actually very few niggles with both of them. You know, you know, from a usability point of view. Yeah, just mechanically both very, very nice, aren't they? They feel so well engineered, taut. They feel like they'd last forever to me. Typical Japanese affair, isn't it? Fantastic. <laughs> oh, that blipper sounds so good. Oh, bikes are so much fun, aren't they? Aren't they? You get a nice day like this, twisty roads. But what a, 
What a hobby. Should we try a roll on? Should we try a roll on? Yeah, sounds good, mate. I need to, hang on, I've, I've not even looked at wheelie control though. I'm gonna go wheelie, oh, wheelie, wheelie control two on this. I think this is on two as well. Because I don't know whether three's max or three's minimum. So if I go in the middle, then <laughs> you've got medium wheelie control. Right, so 20 mile an hour, 20 mile an hour, second gear in three, two, one, go. By the time the blade gets into the power, you, you've, you've hit the speed limit. <laughs> it's gone, you know. Yeah, the R1, that, that pickup with that crossbane engine is just it's just gone. I'm gonna go let me go first on the blade just to Okay. So I'll, I'll keep in second. So in three, two, one, go. Ah. It's weeding. Even with the weeding control on it, yeah, it's it's just like I have to ease. Yeah, the, the, the R1's just got that instant pickup. I mean, obviously the blade's more powerful. So if you if we were to rev them out, I'm sure the blade would start pulling you in at the at the top end. But yeah, you, know, you can't do that on the road, can you? You can't do no, that on the road. And, and it's a roll-on, not a Let's top go, end. So swap, shall we? Swap bikes. Oh swap. yeah, swap. Yeah. Initial pick out the R1's got it, but I don't think that's any. It's going to be any surprise for anybody that really. But it, it's the weight difference enough to even things well, let's out. Do, let's do let's do one more second gear. Yeah, because yeah. obviously I've got a slight weight advantage, haven't I? Only, only half a stone or so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only half a ton or so. <laughs> yeah, am I, am I going to win another roll on? Am I going to win another one? This could be my chance to win another one. If I, if I win another one, then the sausage sandwiches are on me. <laughs> but don't let, don't let that influence your performance. <laughs> you Three, two, one, go! Was almost there. Do one more because I think I could, I could have you. I could have you. I think you could. I'm surprised. I was expecting you to come past. I almost did, didn't I? And then you started coming into the power and then. In three, two, one, go! Oh, there's nothing! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah! We've won a roll up! That's two now! That's two of one! A celebratory high speed corner. I'll tell you what, when the power does build on the on the blade, which does take a little bit to get to, but when it does, oh my God, it is so strong. It's scary fast, isn't it? It's, it is, it is brutal. <laughs> yeah, it's so fast, once once it does get oh, there. It's, it's unbelievable, it's ridiculous. If, if, if you rode this on track, I'd think it, well, for me personally, I'd be terrified of that performance. It's, it's, a, it's an absolute animal, isn't it? It's so so fast. I say it's almost like too much, isn't it? It's almost it's almost like you've got to be some sort of hero to tame that, haven't you? It, it's yeah. It's, it's, so it's either sort of to it's either very gentlemanly like and civilized, and then it goes from that. It is two stroke esque. Yeah. Then it is just banzai performance. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of that two hundred and eighteen just comes in in one <laughs> large dollar. It makes it feel, that's yeah. why it feels so much quicker, isn't it? It's just the way, yeah. it, the way it comes in. It really does. It just sort of slaps yeah, you all about the face. Exactly. Whereas that I think sort of the opposite, isn't it? It comes in really yeah. strong and then tails off yeah. perhaps a bit more at the top. But completely different power characteristics. But wow. Both amazing. Well there we go mate. What a, what a mornings you can't beat around with a couple of litre sports Amazing. bikes can you for yeah, a bit of fun. It's been, been so much fun. Oh. Yeah, both, both good bikes aren't they? I mean, yeah. which is not really a big surprise, is it? No, they're no. Both, they're both good, both top sellers aren't they in their time and for good reason really. Yeah, it's nice yeah. to sort of, because the R1's disappearing, I'm so glad we decided to give me it too. a whirl because, me too. Like, as we said in the video all along, it's really surprised me how comfortable and yeah, usable no, and what a good road bike it yeah, makes. Yeah. I never would have thought I would have said no. an R1 would make a good road bike. Me neither. And I'm not sure if they've changed the ergos of it over the years. From the, well, I've, I've tried a 2016 version before and I remember it being really aggressive, really oh, yeah. wristy. And I, that, I think that's part of the problem. I haven't ridden much of the yeah. kind of latest incarnation of the, no. of the R1. So I just had a perception that it was too track focused and too extreme, but yeah. it's nothing more than perception. No, and actually the not. reality is something very different. It's been quite, a, not nostalgic for me, but I actually had 
a fire blade yeah. when they brought out the original R1. You had the same one as me, didn't you? You had the 98. Correct, Nine, 900, 98, 900, it was a 900 yeah, yeah. blade. Yeah, same as mine. And then they brought out the new R1 in 99, I guess it was, and I bought the new R1. Yeah, it was a 98, yeah, I, yeah. I, bought the, I bought the new R1, and that at the time was the king, wasn't yeah. it? The daddy sort of taking the yeah, crown yeah, yeah. From, from the fire blade. So I, obviously, we've got that sort of history, haven't we, yeah. of, of the, both bikes. I've had two blades as well in my life. So, you know, I'm very familiar with the bike. I had a thousand blade as well. Yeah. That was back in 2010, so a completely different bike to, yeah, to, to completely the late, different. completely different yeah. bike. But it's just been interesting just to see yeah. how they've come on and how they've changed them. And, they, yeah. I mean, they're completely, and the blade's a completely different proposition to my 2010 oh bike. It, it's, I think the thing with the blade, I mean, it's a brilliant bike, but for a road bike, you're very compromised, aren't you? On, on the riding position, even the power delivery to a degree, you know, it's a normal straight four, so it's a little bit flat at the bottom, and then it just goes absolutely bands It's almost like a two-stroke, isn't it? Where the power yeah. comes in and you're, you're fired forward yeah. at ridiculous pace. It, it's the faster bike, I mean, it's more power. Yeah, it's more it, power. It, it is more power on paper, but w yeah. once it gets into that power, it's, it's almost terrifyingly fast, actually. It's too actually. fast for the road, really, isn't it? it, it you, you know, yeah. your licenses, you might as well just tear it up. And yeah. Track it straight in the bin, <laughs> but you can ride it on the road. Because you just have to keep. You have to just keep it in that. Yeah, but the, where, where's the fun in doing that, though? No, I agree. That, that's I the agree. thing. But, but you can ride it sensibly. I mean, you, you could. You could almost, from an engine power delivery point of view, you could commute on it. I yeah. think from a comfort point yeah, of view, yeah, you couldn't. You, but yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. But once once the power builds, you do the roll-ons, and once it builds, it's, oh, it's just ballistic, isn't it? Yeah, hold ballistic. on tight. Yeah, it's, it's hold, hold right. on very tight. Whereas the Yamaha's got more of a usable power delivery for the road. Is it build? Mm, it's the opposite, isn't it? It starts strong, very strong in the mid range, and then perhaps tails off a little bit at the top. Not that I even really explored I, the top. I'm, I'm saying that, that because I, I, I didn't I really that, even no. have it at no. the top. No, I think, yeah, sorry. Because it's not the same, yeah, you know, the MT-10's got a similar engine, but the R1's got titanium crank, you know, it's, it's got a lot more yeah. lightweight internals than the MT-10, even though they're very similar. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, the R1 is a surprisingly good road sports yeah. bike, I would say. I'm yeah. really shocked that I'm saying that, mm. but, I think it's marginally less comfortable than the Suzuki GSX R1000 I had. Not a deal, isn't it? Is it? Not a deal. No, and, and actually it's so marginal that you're not going to notice yeah. it. And, and everything else is totally livable. The power delivery is lovely. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's very easy to live with actually. Yeah. And I, 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 I would happily have that as a road bike. Yeah. Uh, the blade for me, not so much. Really like it. Fantastic bit of kit, beautifully made, yeah. very refined. It's great but it's too uncomfortable for me. Yeah. It's just, it's such an extreme ergonomic setup. It's a shame they don't have cruise control, the pair of them, isn't it? Because that True. sort of thing does help where you can just take your weight off True. and just relax and sit up for a little while. Yeah. None of them have got cruise. Um, so yeah, that just sort of shows how track dedicated are. they are. You know, even yeah. after they, they've been out 20 yeah, years yeah. plus, the pair of them, 20 yeah. years, is it more than 20 years? It's like 25 years almost. Yeah. And they still haven't put cruise control on them in 25 years. No. So that's sort of saying what the bikes yeah, are designed yeah, yeah. for, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But even the new Panagardi's got cruise now, the new one. So yeah. hopefully the R1 will be back at some point. I hope like the GSXR will be back, but I think it's just disappeared until they redesign it and bring something yeah. new out. And hopefully they don't go too track focused with the no. new one when they do bring one out. So if you had to pick then, let's do it. Which one would pick, you pick? For me kids? and what I want to do, I'll take the R1 because it's just yeah. so much more comfortable. I can't live with the riding position of the, of the blade. No, I'm, I'm, on the road. I'm, I'm the same. And I, I think that I'd, I'd pick the R1 as well. The R1's obviously, what, £5,000 cheaper as well, yeah. which is a consideration. Obviously you don't get that nice top quality componentry around the Odin's yeah, and all of that. Yeah. So you can see where your money's going with yeah. the blade, but it's, but it's still a lot cheaper, the R1. Um, I think the only caveat that I would mention is we're both not that young anymore. <laughs> Pretty self-apparent looking, looking at your screen. What are you trying to so, say? No, no, what I'm trying to say is I think if I was in my kind of 20s and 30s, yeah, I think it'd be less of a fuss, yeah. the, the, the blade. Uh, but uh, when you get a little bit older, I think it's a bit like, oh. And also we've done a road test. If we did a track test, different we could program. have a completely different outcome. I completely agree. So, so this is for a road for, for, test. For, 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 if yeah. you want it only for a road, then yeah. I think that the old one makes more sense. I think you're completely right. Yeah. I think on the track, the blade will be an absolute yeah. weapon yeah, yeah. in terms of performance. And I think that riding position will make absolute Sense. perfect. Oh, of yeah, course it will, yeah, of course yeah. it will. So that, that's the yeah. caveat, isn't yeah. it? For the road, the, the, the R1, R1's better. perhaps we need to do a track test of both of them. <laughs> come <laughs> come, in, come, in, come Or the Isle of Man. We weren't going to the Isle of Man to do this. That would have been yeah. superb. But well, if we amazing. do that, Bagsy, you ride the blade to the Isle of Man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> but what we're going to be doing coming soon is as the R1 is disappearing this year, and I've just bought myself a 1999, XV for the original R1. Yep. We're going to do the one I had. The one you had. We're going to do a comparison between the, the last R1 and the original R1. Just Can't as wait. a bit of a trip down memory lane, really. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, I think that'd be quite interesting to see how far it's come in 24 years or whatever it is. So uh, 
If you want to see that, you know what you've got to do? You've got to subscribe, you've got to like, and we will see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.